next element uh, we'll discuss the causality of the i element now uh, let's take an example of a mass and uh, let's assume that the mass on the mass there is a force acting and uh, due to the motion of the mass uh, a velocity v the, the mass moves with a with a velocity v and we can represent this uh, using a power bond uh, showing an i element i representing this inertia okay, mass so mass is an inertia and we write it like this now there is an effort variable and a flow variable and the product of these two is power you see the effort variable we know in case of mass is the it is the whatever effort you apply results in the change of its momentum linear momentum okay so the effort is equal to the rate of change of momentum okay and what does the i element do it receives this effort but it has to produce an output it pro it has to produce flow now it has to produce a flow which is depending upon its state so it has to obtain the state first so it takes the effort it integrates this effort and determines it determines its state which is momentum and then it produces an output which is the flow which is a function of this state okay, psi of t. so the logic is very simple it takes in effort it integrates it determines its momentum its state and it produces an output which is a function of its state okay so this is the simple logic on which uh, the i element uh, works any any inertia any mass for that matter uh, it behaves in this in this particular manner so you have the output produced by this mass we also say that it is the effect of the uh, of the interaction and what is this effect it is a function of the momentum and the momentum has uh, been obtained by integrating the input integrating the cause okay which was effort now you can see here in this equation uh, we are showing output as the flow as shown in this diagram it is a flow it is a function of the momentum it is a function of the momentum uh, in case of newtonian mechanics we write momentum as mass multiplied by velocity and flow actually is just the velocity in this case so velocity is actually momentum divided by mass okay it's just momentum divided by mass so uh, this is equal to uh, what is momentum momentum is uh, obtained by integrating this rate of change of momentum so whatever effort was provided it is integrated momentum is produced momentum is determined and then a function of that momentum uh, is produced which is the flow of this mass okay so uh, this this equation may seem a bit mathematical to you but i'll explain to you its meaning right now so in newtonian mechanics uh, if you have if you take a mass uh, you can impose a force on that mass but it is a mass that will determine the velocity with which it should move okay so 
uh, it will receive effort, but it will determine the flow. So uh, the causal stroke will come here towards the mass end because it's receiving effort. Uh, this way of representation is also uh, deemed as uh, effect. Okay, it's the output or effect is equal to a function of the integral of cause with respect to time, right up to the present time. You see, we are integrating from past from initial time up to the present time. OK, and what are we integrating? We are integrating the cause that is the effort, whatever effort was imposed on this mass. So uh, let us see certain simple examples um, in order to confirm this concept for us, make this concept more clear. Uh, you all have worked with, uh, you all have played with balls. OK, uh, suppose you take a tennis ball. And you apply a force of uh, say one, uh, one kilo Newton on the tennis ball. OK, the mass of the tennis ball is something. You applied a force of one kilo Newton on it. And naturally the ball will move under the influence of that force. Now. You take another ball, let us say you take a season ball. Which has more mass than a tennis ball. Okay. You apply the same force on it. One kilo Newton. What will be the velocity? Will it be more or less? Yes, anybody? Can you guess? Can you reason out? Hello? Uh, are you sorry, all the velocity, sorry, the velocity of the season wall will be less uh, due to its more energy. Correct. It is because ma momentum divided by mass is the velocity. OK, now mass for, of the season ball is more. Naturally, you are providing the same momentum. The same change of momentum is the same. So uh, the, the velocity will become less. Now suppose you I'm sure you all have seen a short put. OK. Uh, in athletics, you all must have seen a short put. It's much more heavier than a season ball. <coughs> OK, it has much more mass in it. You apply the same force one kilo Newton on this short put. And now you tell me. How what will be the velocity of the short put? It will be even lesser than the velocity of the season ball. Do you agree? All of you? Yes, sir. OK, that is because. Uh, the rules are governed by this relationship. The velocity will be determined as momentum divided by the mass. The momentum was obtained by the integral of this force that was applied on the mass. The, the force was the same one kilo Newton. OK, but. The moment it got divided by. The mass, the value of the mass. Now in this case of short, but the value of the mass is much more. So naturally its velocity will be less. So you can see here that. While you are determining one of the variables of power. The other variable of power is determined by the subsystem itself. In this case it's the mass. So you can impose a force on the mass, but the mass will will determine what should be its own velocity. You cannot determine both the force as well as the velocity. OK, so you can't uh, so uh, being uh, the person who is applying the force, uh, it's not possible for us to also specify the force and also specify the velocity 
with which the body is to move that is because the laws of physics are to be respected okay uh, if if it was possible for us to apply very little force and obtain very large velocities okay if both of these could be determined by us itself then it would have worked wonders like in animation movies okay so you could have tom and jerry kind of uh, characters where uh, apply a little force and you find uh, tremendous velocity being produced uh, going straight to the moon okay so such kind of uh, things don't happen in reality it's because the laws of physics are to be followed okay so this interaction this cause and effect is very very important therefore what is deciding effort what is deciding flow and how this interaction is uh, to be respected of uh, the inertia it can take effort but it will determine the motion depending upon its mass if the mass is more it will say okay for the same effort the motion will be less okay so that is about uh the aspect of causality cause and effect cause and effect for the i element uh we also have uh, we can also represent this relationship like this rate of change of effect with respect to time uh, is a function of the cause uh this form of causality uh it's a natural form of causality for the i element okay it's also called the integral causality for the i element you can see it's because of this integral and there is a meaning for this uh, it's good that uh, this integral comes in you see the capability of the integral is that it just accumulates the things of the past so you are able to integrate efforts from past time ti up to the present time t okay all the history of effort gets integrated so at any point of time if you want the present flow it has taken into account the past history right up to the present time past history of the cause and that's very logical you see the effect that is produced now can be up to whatever is the uh, input that is provided right up to now so all the past cause is taken into consideration and the effect is produced that's why it's called a natural or integral causality for the i element okay uh, we will also see <coughs> other uh, ways in which uh, i element is causal which is the derivative causality uh, it's not a very <clears throat> it's not the way in which uh, causality for the i element takes place naturally and we'll see why it happens like that so we have uh, the i element uh, now suppose instead of as in the previous case instead of effort being applied on the i element suppose the i element is supposed to produce an effort if it is supposed to receive a flow and produce an effort okay we have done the reverse now okay so it has to take the input so depending upon the momentum and the mass it is supposed to determine its momentum and then it has to produce an output which is a function of this momentum so in this case it's the derivative of this momentum okay this is the output or the effect suppose if we do causality for the i element in this manner then what happens first of all we have to invert this relationship in order to determine the momentum of course in newtonian mechanics that is fairly easy as long as there is some mass you can certainly determine uh, the momentum so you have Uh, the mass multiplied by the velocity giving you the momentum now 
you have to determine the effect which is effort which is the derivative of this momentum now you know that the derivative operation okay it's unlike the integral operation the integral operation it accumulated everything of, of the past but the derivative operation does not accumulate anything of the past it doesn't take into consideration the past history okay whatever is present at the present time only so you find that the effect which is produced is a derivative of the momentum okay but the history past history is not taken into consideration in that case uh, if the i element is so, supposed to provide effort the causal stroke will come here because this is the end which is receiving the effort but the problem is that nature does not behave like this okay uh, nature uh, it wants that the past history of cause should be considered it should be taken into account okay uh, so this form of causality where you have the effect as a derivative of the function of cause this form of causality is uh, it says that it shows as if the effect does not depend on the past cause it just depends on the instantaneous uh, moment itself so this is not a natural way in which the i element behaves it's not the natural causality for the i element okay so uh, we will discuss about the c element in our uh, causality of the c element in our next class uh, we'll pause our lecture here for today if anyone has any question please don't hesitate to ask me now any questions